Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday to all of you. I am starting this video on Saturday. Um, we are going to be doing a kitten chat, but this one's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to take you through getting ready to begin this kit from start to finish. So from the kitting up process, through the choosing of accessories, through the sectioning off with washi. I'm going to do it all with you guys. And I'm also going to show you how I set up to work on such a large canvas. So this came from, a idea came from a comment that I had on one of my videos last week, I think it was. Someone asked if I could talk about how I work on large canvases. And this is the perfect one to do that with. So I'm going to be kidding up Cabin Porch by Greg Giordano. It's this image here. This kit is a 70 by 100 centimeter. So this is just about as large of a kit as I go. Um, the Manny Manzano princess panels are a little bit longer, but um, this is the largest one I've worked on in a very long time. So I thought that it would be the best one and it kind of worked out that I had it coming up next in the pipeline. So um, I think I'm gonna have to film this for myself in two parts, but it's going, going to be one video for you guys. Um, it's, I think it's about five o'clock. Also, I have my window open. It's really nice here. So if you hear different things, I waited to film this later in the day because everybody was out doing yard work, us included. So hopefully we won't have too many sounds like that, but there's definitely motorcycles out and nice cars. So it is a little bit loud out there. Um, but since it's, about, I think it's a little after five. Um, I don't know that with the amount of daylight I have, if I'm going to be able to film everything that I want to film, I at least want to get the kidding up done. So that's what we're going to aim for. That's what we're going to start with today. So I'm kidding up cabin porch. This is a square drill. I've not worked on a square at all this year. This will be my first square. And I did go ahead and sort out my drills. Um, when I kit up, I like to cut all of the bags apart and kit, uh, sort them by number, so like by hundreds. So I have our 100s, 300s, 400s, and so on. So I did that ahead of time, um, but I was pleased to see that it does not look like the squares are suffering from the same static issues as the rounds. So hopefully this will go smoothly. Knock on fake wood. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so I will be kidding up into my, um, what is this called? The Joann's um, Six Tier Stadium Stamp Storage, I think is what it's called. I will try to find a link down below. And these are the large Tic Tac style containers. I got these off of Amazon. Um, I'm realizing I still have dirt on my hand from working in our garden, <laughs> but oh well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. There are... 52 colors, I think, and a lot of some of these browns. So it may not be super enjoyable to watch, but we'll figure it out. All right, let's do this. So when I kit up, I like to put washi tape down on my containers. It just helps the de-kitting process. I don't have to worry about my stickers leaving a yucky residue. So I like to use a thin washi. And then on the Diamond Art Club stickers, I cut off the serial number, I think is what they call it on Diamond Art Club. And I just use this symbol and then the DMC. And let's do that. So it looks like this kit has six ABs, which is crazy. Um, Oh, I decided to use this storage system because the containers, they hold a lot of drills. I feel like they're a little deceiving uh, when you look at them, but they actually hold a ton of diamonds, which is nice. I like not having to think too much. I love the Elizabeth Ward storage system. That is still a favorite. But sometimes when I'm kidding up, I just don't want to have to think about what size container I need. So... These are nice, and I do have quite a few colors that have multiple bags. And I think in this setup, I'm able to have like close to 70 containers, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll be able to, I should be able to get all of the drills in 
um, regardless. So that'll be nice. I do like having all of my drills kitted up. I don't like having to go back through baggies. It's just, it annoys me. So, or not baggies, but like, I don't like keeping like extra packages to the side because then I forget that I have them. So if I can get everything kitted up into this set of containers here, I will be very happy. I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb. So people are texting me. That's okay. <laughs> How was everyone's week last week? Um, mine was, it was very busy with work. I think I've mentioned this before, but from like here until the end of June is crazy for me at work. I work in, I work for a school district. Um, I do IT and it's just crazy times for us. So we had New York State testing on Wednesday and Thursday and we're all, I, I work in a very large district. Um, we have five elementary schools, two middle schools, and then we have one huge high school. So this past week, our third graders through eighth graders did New York State math testing, and um, each member of IT is assigned to a building. So we did that on Wednesday and Thursday. It was just, it's not like bad, especially because this is the second round of testing. We had ELA testing two weeks ago, and that always is the one that like we have to work the kinks out of. And then by the time math comes, we're just, we're good to go. Um, so it wasn't bad. It's just, I have other things that I need to be doing than just sitting um, and waiting for things to go awry, but it was fine. Nothing too crazy happened, so... And having that big project in the morning, but like having that to do just makes the rest of the day go by so quickly. So that is nice, but all right, I am going to try, I'm going to get as many drills into these containers as I can. So I am going to use up four for this color. So we had that and then Thursday after work, my best friend came over with her three kids and we ordered some pizzas. It was really nice here. So it was, well, it did rain, but her kids don't care. They were out on our play set. They were fine. Um, it was nice to see her. I haven't seen her since, I think January actually is the last time I saw her, which is not good, but like I said, she has three little ones, so sometimes it can be hard for us to coordinate our schedules. So they come over and then it was like 8.30. They had just left and I got a text message from my coworker and he was like, hey, I won't be in tomorrow. The entire family has head lice. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> you have what? <laughs> and for me, like anything like that, I've always been this way. Let me know if you're the same. But if you tell me that you have head lice, instantly my head itches. And I'm like, oh my God, I have head lice. Even though I don't. <laughs> but it's just like a reaction, I guess. I don't know. I've never had head lice. But as soon as he said that, I was like, oh my God, I need to go take a shower. <laughs> so... Yeah, he was not in on Friday. He has three kids as well, and his wife is a kindergarten teacher, so things happen. Um, but, ay ay ay. So, Friday was fun. I was, you know, without my partner for the day, but nothing crazy happened, so I can't complain too much. Um, and then, it is Saturday when I'm filming this. Normally I film these videos on Sunday, but I have a week to go to tomorrow for a different coworker and you know, I just have some stuff that I wanna do. So I decided to sit down and film today. 
So this morning was the coronation of Charles and that other lady. <laughs> um, I got up and watched it. I'm in New York, so it started... So actually, I set an alarm for 5.30, I think. And Stephen comes in at like 4.15. And he's like, I fell asleep on the couch. So I was like, well, I guess I'm up now. <laughs> so I got up and I streamed it on YouTube, watched it in the living room so he could fall back asleep. And it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't necessarily like care about the monarchy because I'm in the States, but I've always enjoyed watching like the big events. Like I watched William and Kate's wedding. I watched Prince Phil Philip's funeral. I watched the Queen's funeral. I did watch Harry and Meghan's, but we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> if I have anyone who watches me from the UK or like any of the other territories that the British are the monarchy for, please let me know your thoughts on Harry and Meghan. I'm so interested. I, I think I've said a few times, like I used to love Prince Harry. I was in love with him. I thought he was like the greatest. I don't know. He was just cheeky. And I feel like he reminded me of Diana quite a bit. And it's disappointing the way things have conspired. And I'm not saying that the royal family is completely innocent by any means, because I've heard many different things that have happened. And it's just the way that Meghan and Harry went about it that has really rubbed me the wrong way. I also just don't like Meghan Markle's like demeanor and I'm not like team William versus team Harry. Like it's very sad that the brothers don't get along anymore, but anyway, um, I'm not for one side or the other. I think there is room enough for everybody. I liked when they were referred to as the Fab Four. I thought it was cute, but it makes me very sad that their kids don't know each other. I love how I'm talking about this like it actually matters in my world because it sure as heck doesn't, but it makes me sad that William and Harry's kids don't know each other. And I, I am one of those people that is always like, well, what if this happened? And what if, you know, like, what if Diana was still alive? Like, surely we know that her and Charles wouldn't be together. Like, it would not have been Diana being crowned today as the queen. But do we think that William and Harry would be, you know, not be where they are? Because I do. I feel like if she was around, she would have whipped them both into shape. <laughs> Anyway, um, I did really enjoy the coronation. Um, I understand that some people find them really boring, but I love seeing all of the other royal families. Like some of my other favorite royals were there. Um, I love um, Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary from Denmark. I would love to go to Denmark someday. I love them. Um, I also love... Crown Princess Victoria from Sweden. Um, she was there with her father, the king. Um, I guess Charles is like the first person in, like, I don't know if it's like in the UK. I know this was the first coronation in like 70 years, but I don't think when Queen Elizabeth was coronated, I don't think that she had any other royals. So that was kind of cool. I also love um, the king and queen of Jordan. They're pretty cool too. Reina and is it Abdullah? King Abdullah, I think. Um, I don't know. I just find royalty so interesting. So I loved seeing like what everybody was wearing and all the traditional robes and stuff. I just think it's neat. My boyfriend thinks I'm crazy. He's like, do you, do you know what happened in 1776? And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't mean I can't watch. <laughs> um... And I just think that um, Princess Catherine is just absolutely gorgeous. I love that woman. 
absolutely love her and her kids are so cute. So Louie was like my spirit animal. I love him. So yeah, that was my morning. I was up at 4.30. <laughs> it was like, I think the procession started at 5 maybe? No, 5.30 I think it was. I can't remember. And I was watching until like 9.30. <laughs> so yikes. Um, but I enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it. I know it's not necessarily my history because it's not U.S. history, but it is still fun to watch. So let me know if you watched The Coronation. I would be interested to know. I know I'm not the only person in the U.S. that watched it, but I wonder if any of you guys watched it. I was going to Diamond Paint while I was watching it, but I decided that 4 a.m. was just 4.30 was too early to be diamond painting for me. So I did that and then I did some, oh, I don't need washi tape yet. I did some chores. Um, I cleaned the kitchen and all that fun stuff, started laundry. And then for whatever reason, I was in this like, I need to organize mode. So I actually cleaned all of my makeup brushes. Who am I? <laughs> I am so bad at that. I just end up buying more so I don't have to clean the ones that I have. So yeah, and then when they're dirty, I just put them in a container and they just sit there until I get into one of these moods and then I clean them all. So <laughs> my counter is just full of makeup brushes that are drying right now. But it felt good to get those cleaned. And then since I did that, I was like, well, I might as well organize my makeup cart. So I did that. I threw a bunch of stuff out, which felt good. And then I said to Steven, I'm going to go out and sweep off the back porch and pull the outside furniture out, get that cleaned. Because it's been really nice here. It was like 70 degrees today and it's supposed to be really nice all next week as well. We've had like a week straight of rain, so it's, it's nice. <laughs> So I wanted to be outside. So I went and did that. And then, you know, my wonderful boyfriend comes out and he's like, hey, why don't you dig up these rosebush stubs? I had two rose bushes that didn't make it last year and they were not coming back this year. So I was like, okay. So I did that. And then he starts trimming tree limbs and he's like, can you pick those up and take them to the road? <laughs> and then he's like, hey, while we're at it, why don't we just do our front bed? Because we have been we have to have a water line replaced like the water line that goes to our septic tank I think it is it got backed up a couple of months ago and our guy was like we should probably just you know think about replacing it and we have been wanting to redo that bed anyway since we moved in because the previous owners just had a bunch of ugly stuff in there um so it's something we've been wanting to do. So we decided that we were just gonna pull everything. So, you know, my 10 minute project of sweeping off the back deck and moving the furniture became two hours. <laughs> so thanks a lot for that, Steven. But at least it was nice out. So we did do that. And it it's one of those things where like, it feels good to have it done. You know, like you dread doing it. It's something we've been talking about. But then it comes up and we're like, nah, maybe another day. So, ugh. yikes, but it's done. That's all that matters. And it was a nice day out. So we got to enjoy being outside. Um, what else? Oh, I did make a purchase today. I actually made a couple of purchases. So I did make a purchase through Diamond Art Club with their new releases. Um, I picked up, I will try to remember to pop up pictures here of the two kits that I purchased. You'll eventually see them in a post review, not a post review, an unboxing. Um, but I picked up the new, excuse me, my nose is running from my allergies. Um, I picked up the new Mandy Manzano. It's called, actually, you know what? I have my iPad right here, so why don't we just look and then that's less editing um instagram actually can i just go through the shop app 
Yes, so I got Child of Heaven, which is a kit that I have been waiting, hoping, praying <laughs> that Diamond Art Club would pick up from Mandy Manzano. Can I make it larger? No. It's this one. Isn't it so pretty? Now all I need is the All Cats Go to Heaven. Oh, yeah, I need that kit. And then I also got Shell Basket. I just thought this one was really pretty. This one's by, does it say? It doesn't say who the artist is, but she's very popular. I've seen quite a few pieces from that particular artist. So I picked those two kits up and I actually used points. So I had to pay shipping plus a few dollars that the points amount that I redeemed wouldn't cover. Uh, so that was nice. I know I said that I was thinking about doing a no buy, but then they previewed that kit. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know why I, or if you haven't, I'm sure you can assume why I wanted that kit. And I just, I couldn't wait. I, I needed it, which I know is so ridiculous. It's just a diamond painting, but um, I've been waiting for that kit for so long. So I did pick it up. And technically one of the, I don't know what you want to call it, but one of the like, not excuses, but what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, when Brie and I decided to do our no buy, we gave ourselves not criteria, I guess like, I guess you could say like criteria for breaking the no buy. And one of those was to redeem kits, like your, redeem your points. So I guess technically, if we were still on our no buy, that, that would have been okay. But I had so many points. I still have a bunch. So, um... I was able to do that. And then I did make a couple of small shop purchases. I will have a small shop haul coming, not this week, maybe next week. I know in my last one, I was like, it'll be a while. No, it won't. <laughs> um, but I made a purchase from Brie at Painting with Pitties um, for some of her Pity Putty. Um, I don't know obviously, because I'm filming this a couple of days in advance from when I'm posting, but I will leave her shop link down below. Um, so you can check and see if she has any putty available, but she came out with this new set. She's calling them bundles and you get um, multiple scents. So I got that and then she had a peach scent, which I love this peaches. I love the smell of peaches. I love the taste of peaches. <laughs> um, so I picked up a peach one and then there was like a mojito one, like blueberry mojito or something. I picked that one up. So I have some, Just hold on. Sorry guys. <laughs> okay. Now walk away from the door, like go all the way back to the living room. <laughs> I can tell that you're still standing there. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> I heard Steven walking up to the door and I don't like talking. I don't like filming when he's around. It makes me nervous. <laughs> um, I don't even remember what I was saying because he distracted me. So whatever I was saying, I think I was talking about Bree's putty. Um, so yeah, make sure you check the link below to see if she has any in stock. She also has really awesome handmade cover minders, which I have shared a few times on the channel. And I also made a purchase from a new shop. I think it's a new shop in general. It's new to me at least. And it is, what's it called? Bliss Studio Shop. Um... I have followed them on Instagram. I can't, what is their handle? Bliss. Bliss Studio Hobbies. This is um, the Instagram. Her name is Ashley. I have followed her for her diamond painting content for quite a while. And she announced that she opened an Etsy shop. So I wanted to check out what she had. Um, some really adorable cover minders, which I don't need. I am actually... 
out of room on my two cover minder boards. So I really need to do a reorganization of all of that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm looking at them right now and they are jam packed. So I need to organize those. I'm thinking that I might try to come up with a different way to organize like my seasonal cover minders because in reality like my Christmas minders I use in December and that's it. Same goes for like Halloween. Um, I have some Easter minders. I have I even have a couple of St. Patrick's Day ones. So I'm thinking that I might try to come up with a different way to organize the seasonal ones which would then in turn give me some more room for every day minders i'm just looking and i feel like i'm not gonna have enough containers which would just be my my thing because normally i count them but whatever if i have to i'll just stop using multiple containers for the same colors we'll figure it out it's not a big deal so yeah i have some cover minders coming from them i do have some new trays that i'll be sharing from a new shop in that small shop haul, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, I also wanted to run by, run an idea by you guys for some, like a week of videos. So I was thinking about doing a week of videos that are like all of my collections. So it wouldn't be my diamond painting stash because I know I'm going to film an updated one for you guys, I've told you that, but that is just such a process so that's not coming up just yet but I was thinking that I might do like a week of videos so Monday through Friday where I show you my pen collection my tray collection my putty collection my minder collection it's only three pens trays minders wax and putty there's got to be something else something other diamond painting related I'd have to think about that actually. Now I can't think of anything. So maybe it would just be four, four videos. I don't know. But I was thinking maybe I could just do like a week of collections. <laughs> um, so let me know if you'd be interested in that. Um, I think that that would be fun. I did do all of those videos at some point last year. Um, but I thought I could just kind of make it an event where it's an exciting week of videos. So we'll see if I can make that happen. Well, I guess let me know. And then if you guys are in, I'll try to make it happen. 738, 739, 41, 42, 43. All right. Um, but yeah, that's kind of kind of oh so if you guys have shopped with Galloway's Gallery I'm looking at this item which is what made me go oh I wanted to talk to you guys about that um if you have ever shopped with Galloway's Gallery normally you get a thank you card from the owner like a few weeks after you place your order um so I went to my mailbox the other day and I was like oh I got a thank you card awesome and Normally you get a discount code, maybe not every time, but sometimes you get a discount code because I did get one. And look at the card that I was sent. It's an otter. It's two, it's two otters. Is it two or three? I can't tell. Isn't that so cute? Um, the owner of Gallery's Gallery takes like wildlife photography. You can actually see. I keep all of the cards that I've gotten from her because the pictures are always so cool. But look at this one. I'm going to hang it somewhere in here. I would hang it on my minder board, but I don't have any room. <laughs> so I need to figure that out. Um, but I was so, I like did a little screech when I saw that it was an otter. I was so excited. So yeah, we love to see it. <laughs> I always say it like that because Steven makes fun of me. think I'm trying to think of what else I had to talk to you guys about hopefully I can squeeze this bag in I don't know though maybe do we think I'll need 
this tiny bit of this color, <laughs> probably. We're gonna make it happen. Cause I need to be conserving containers, it, it would appear. All right, you know what? I'm good with that. Looks like we're gonna get rid of a few, but I don't think I will need these six drills. Goodbye. All right, those are very full. I'm going to have to be mindful of that when I start this diamond painting. Excuse me. All right, um, what else do I have to talk to you guys about? I'm not nearly done, so I need to come up with something. Oh, there goes, there goes my neighborhood train. The train goes by like at the end of our street. So I, I'm only like aware of it when I'm filming though, because I'm like, oh God, people probably think <laughs> I live in a dump, <laughs> but I don't. Um, it's just where the overpasses for the train tracks. I'm glad I don't live on the other end of our street though, because there are houses literally right next to the train tracks and it must like shake their house. I don't know. God bless them if they have small children because they do come through all hours of the night. Just enjoy the, the train sounds. I have had some of you comment how, that also live near train tracks and you're like, I couldn't tell if it was your train or my train. <laughs> All right. I guess in talking about like collections and doing a diamond painting stash update, would you guys like to see it in the same format that I did it last year? So what I did last year is... I did it by brand and I actually broke my Diamond Art Clubs down into, I think I did three videos of Diamond Art Club kits. So I did my Mandy Manzanos, my Chuck Pinsons, and then the rest of my Diamond Art Club. Um, I did finish 12 Mandy Manzano kits last year, so I don't know that I would need to do a separate Mandy video. Although I do have a lot of the princess panels, so maybe I would. I don't know. Or would you rather just see all of my Diamond Art Clubs together, regardless of how long the video would be? And also, when I did my collections last year, I took all of the paintings out of the boxes rather than just showing you the boxes. Now that's not me like trying to be rude to people who do just the boxes because I know that filming a stash is a huge undertaking. It took me a long time to do last year. So would you like to see the canvases again? Or would you just wanna see the box? I don't really care either way. I'm fine with doing the canvases again. Um, you guys would just have to know that it will take me a bit longer to get that content out because I need a good chunk of time to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you have a preference, if you don't care one way or the other, um, give me your, your thoughts and opinions down below. Cause I try to, you know, do things that you guys will enjoy. <laughs> that is the, the whole goal here. there. I think I will have enough containers actually. I think I was kind of jumping the gun with being worried about it. I am a little nervous for this kit <laughs> because I have not worked on a large, like a really large diamond painting in quite some time. And I'm also, I'm struggling with squares lately just because I don't want to do them. And this is a very large kit to go back to squares on. So I'm hoping I don't hate it. 
I do love the artwork, so I think I'm going to enjoy it. But one of you commented on my month in review and you were like, that is so much brown. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes it is so much brown. But this is the second kit that I have planned for this month and it is the only other kit that I have planned because I knew how big of an undertaking it would be. I didn't want to have pressure to need to finish this one in time to finish a third kit. Now in saying that, if by some miracle, because I was looking at this kit last night and there is quite a bit of color blocking. So in theory, could I potentially finish this with enough time to do a third kit? Yes. However, I'm not going to put that pressure on myself, like I just said, but if I do manage to finish this kit, I might kit up that new Mandy Manzano because May is the Mandy Manzano event, which is being hosted by Crafting with Susie and Nurse Rachel and Crafts. I think that's who's hosting it, pretty sure. Um, so I would potentially be interested in working on that Mandy Manzano kit, but like I said, that'll all depend on <laughs> where I end up with this one. Now I am still working on my crafties. There were actually a couple of nights this past week where I did not want to diamond paint. Obviously Thursday when my friend was here with her kids, I didn't get any done. And then there was another night earlier in the week that I did not diamond paint. I think it was Tuesday, Steven and I watched uh, the Yankee game together, which was nice. But the current kit I'm working on is from Crafties and I will be doing a full post review. I have, I'm on the last row. Um, I'll probably get, I have three sections left, but it is a lot of color blocking. So I'll probably get two sections done tonight and then I'll get the last one done tomorrow. So I will be doing a post review, but can I just tell you guys sneak peek of that post review? I'm so disappointed in that kit. Now I have finished two other crafties diamond paintings and they were fine. I remember them being okay. I didn't hate them. I think I have post reviews on both of them um, on my channel. Again, if I can remember, I'll try to link them, but I'm so bad at linking stuff in the description. Um, you can always just search um, Diamond Paintings by Laura Crafties and they will pop up. But anyway, I don't remember being this disappointed and I don't know if it's because like my judgment was clouded by other people who were doing Crafties kits at the time or if it's because this kit has sat for a little bit um, but it's just not good and Crafties kits are expensive. Now I have not worked on a craft, like I haven't worked on a newer Crafties, so one that's been released recently. Um, this kit that I'm working on is still from my first purchase with them. So I think I would be willing to make another purchase, not now, but maybe in the future, to see if they've done anything to improve their kits. But it's just, it doesn't live up to, I need to take a quick drink, sorry guys. The kits just don't live up to the price in my opinion. Um, are they licensed? Yes, which is great, we love that. But, Oh geez, oh my gosh, look at me, I'm all fired up now. Um, I'll go into more detail like in my actual post review, but for the price, oh, I just didn't cut that bag right. You're basically working on a kit from, you know, I've shared new craft day kits with you guys. I've shared fan cells kits before. They're basically the same as that, <laughs> but you're paying $45, just saying. Um, I am not clearly a Crafties affiliate. Um, if you love Crafties, 
I'm not trying to, you know, make you feel bad. I just feel like for the amount that I paid for this kit, I'm very disappointed. Um, so if you want to hear more in depth about that, I will have a post review up Friday, post review Friday, um, where I will go further into some detail about exactly why this kit hasn't been working for me. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'll have one, two, three, four, five colors left. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. I will have enough containers. Um, I have heard people describe Crafties as an affordable website, and that blows my mind. <laughs> Every time I hear that, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm working on a 40 by 50 for the same amount of money that I just paid for a, I don't know, 50 by 70 kit from Diamond Art Club. And I know that Diamond Art Club's quality is going to be leaps and bounds beyond what I'm experiencing. So it just, I don't know. Let me know, let me know your thoughts. Have you worked on a crafties? Am I being silly? Um, you know, I will be very transparent in my post review that this is an older kit. This, like I said, this is from my first um, order with them. It's been sitting for a year and a half, maybe. How long have I been? I honestly believe that my first video on YouTube is a crafties unboxing where I unbox this kit. I, I truly do believe that. So I've been on YouTube for over a year. So when I first started, I was not consistent. I posted just random videos like once a month. Um, so I kind of don't really count that time for my channel, but um, yeah, anyway. Let me know your thoughts. Am I being over the top? We'll see. We'll talk about it. What else do I have to talk about? I'm not quite sure just yet what Wednesday's video will be. I do have two Diamond Art Club kits that I need to unbox. Um, that I've had for a couple of weeks. One of them was a new release two or three weeks ago at this point. And then one of them is just a kit that came out during my no buy that I wanted. So I may, just to get those done and out of the way, I may do a Diamond Art Club unboxing on Wednesday. I do have two more kits coming, so I will still have stuff to unbox later in the month. But, ooh, these ones are a little staticky here. I do also need to get, ooh, sorry about that. I need to get back to reorganizing my special drills. We started that like in January, I think, where we reorganized my sparklers. And I have not touched that project since we did that video. So currently all of my special drills are just sitting in a box. And when I wanna pull anything for projects, I have to just dump the box out. <laughs> go in search of what I'm looking for. So I do need to make some time to, to work on that, which I'll probably do in a Friday video over the next couple of weeks, because after I do this Friday's post review, I won't have anything to review until I finish Cabin Porch. So maybe I'll plan to do that, uh, work on organizing some special drills with you guys. I just, if I don't sit down to film it, I don't want to do it because I have other things that I want to be doing, whether it's diamond painting or reading. Um, if I'm not filming it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so maybe that's what I'll do. Who knows? $37.99. 37 
$1.99. All right, two colors left after this one. I'm trying to like plan ahead a little bit on what pen I'm gonna use for this kit and I can't, like nothing is coming to my mind. So <laughs> I was gonna try to just have a few options to kind of share with you guys, but I may just have to pull out all of my cases and we may just have to go through them together because nothing is coming to mind. Same with a cover minder. I'm looking at my minder boards and I just don't see anything. I'm kind of thinking that I might be able to get away with using like an otter minder with this one because you know like river river otters are a thing so maybe we'll do that. I don't know. I don't know what kind of washi tape to use. I don't know what pen. Ugh. This is when I get envious of people who just use the same accessories with every kit. I wish I could be like you. <laughs> it would make it would make my life so much easier. All right, so we are done kitting up. I have a mess that I need to clean up. Here are our drills. Lots of fun colors. Um, well, lots of browns, but we do have some fun colors. And we have six ABs in this one. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I am going to... I, I might film accessories. I don't know. Um, but you will see this all in one video. Obviously, if you're watching, you know that. Um, but we are going to move on to choosing accessories and then we're going to uh, section with washi and then we will move to how I set up a large project on my desk, drafting table, all of that fun stuff. So I will see you guys in a bit. All right, I've decided to do accessories tonight because why not? What else do I need to do other than dime of paint? <laughs> so this part of the video is going to be a little bit choppy because I'm going to have to be moving things in and out of frame. So I have my washi tape containers right now, and then I'll have to pull over my pen cases and my tray cases. So this part of the video is going to be a little bit choppy, but hopefully we're all okay with that. So here is the image that we are looking for washi tape for. Now washi tape is definitely not, oh, I just realized I could do my washi tape as a fifth collection video. Totally random thought. Anyway, <laughs> um, washi tape is not required at all for diamond painting. I have a cat who is shedding her winter coat and cat hair is everywhere. And I've always had cats when I've diamond painted. So covering that extra strip of adhesive on the side of the canvases has just been a must for me personally. Does it fully protect me from getting cat hair in my canvases? No, but it is what it is. Also, it's just another fun way to get um, a craft supplies in to diamond painting and to get all matchy matchy. So I do enjoy using washi tape. However, you do not need to. Um, so generally the first thing I do when I start choosing accessories is the washi tape because I kind of build off of whatever I choose. Um, I have three of these containers, but I don't think that there's anything in the third container that I need to look at. These two mostly primarily house my tapes from Amanda Michelle Designs, which is my favorite washi tape shop. Um, I don't really know what I'm thinking for washi tape, so we're just going to take a look. I don't think I have any plaids. I think a plaid would be really pretty um, since the blanket is plaid. Maybe I'll do like a red floral, I don't know. So we're just gonna take a look. So the one that I have open here is my newer um, tray or set, I guess, container tray. Um, so I don't have as many in here. Um, I have, these are all Diamond Art Club tapes and then these are all Scotch brand. I don't have anything in here that I would wanna use. So we're just gonna look at this top tray here. These are from Amanda Michelle Designs. Um, I could just go for like a neutral, like vine, but I just, I don't know. I'm also thinking that I could do like something like this. 
for like the water and the sky. I think what I might do is I might pull out a couple of tapes and then see what matches best with my other accessories that I choose. So I think that's what we'll do. So I'm going to pull this one because this one could work. Um, it's kind of just like a watercolor blue. Um, I could also go for like this red. But I'm kind of going to run into the issue of this is a very big canvas and am I going to have enough on rolls that I've already started using? So I might not choose that one. That's like an orange and a red. Don't think I would want to use that. All right, let's pull over the other case. This one is chock full, so hopefully we can find something in here. I try to kind of keep them in some type of order. Let me move these drills because I feel like that's kind of keeping us from seeing everything. So I have like solid colors. These are like um, patterns, I guess. I was thinking that this one might work, but looking at it, I don't think I would like that. I do have a cloud tape. I have lots of cat ones. Nothing there is calling my name. I feel like a floral is going to be our best bet. Um, Oh, this wood grain one is kind of enticing. I don't know. What do we think about? This is a brand new roll, so I definitely have enough. <sighs> we do have this red floral. These are poppies, but I have a few different poppy tapes, so I could use that. Oh my gosh, I have two of this one. I didn't even realize. Do I want to use something like this? This is what I do. <laughs> like this, when I plan my kits, I do just this. You're getting like behind the scenes of me being a maniac and needing to wa match washi tape. Um, I feel like this would just be a good neutral. Like it's just like leaves. Um, these are sunflowers, but I don't think that that would really work. Um, these are all of my like water tapes, but I don't know that I really like any of those for this kit. I could do this one, which is like, actually that one might be kind of cute. It's trees with like little bunnies and squirrel, squ squirrels. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Squirrels. <laughs> I think I might actually like that one. Okay, let's keep out this one, this one, and we'll keep these three out. And then we'll go through my other accessories and see if I can find anything that I like with these tapes. I might leave out this now. I'm just going to go with these three. So I'm going to leave these three out. Um, I will clear away the washi tape and I will be back with probably pens and trays. I'll probably bring both over at the same time. Okay. I have all but one of my pen cases. I don't think I'm going to need anything from that other case, but if I do, then I'll grab it. So, okay. What? I When I choose pens, I try to use like other... Like I try not to use the same shop over and over. So I'm currently using a pen from Jim's Handmade Pen Shop. So that kind of eliminates this case unless I can't find anything else. Um, and then, yeah, I haven't had any repeats in a while. So let me, let's just take, let's just take a little look. Um, we're working with these three tapes again. I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I think it just kind of fits the vibe of the paint a little, the paint of the painting <laughs> a little bit more, but I do have these two if I can't find anything that I like. So I'm going to put those off to the side and let's just get into these. 
So this case, I believe, has my O'Brien custom... No, this is Axe and Iron. I haven't used an Axe and Iron pen in a while. I feel like whenever I work on a landscape, I'm always drawn to this pen. But I just used a pen from this shop. This is from Mountain Inspirations. Um, I just used a pen from them. So I feel like I need to kind of take a step back. These are... 802 Diamond Painting Pens by Lisa. I don't even know if that shop still exists. These are Lazy River. Nothing in there. Let me grab the picture just so I have that for reference. So nothing in this case that's calling my name. These are Patriotic Team, which I would like to use a pen. I haven't used a pen from them. These are C'est Plus Beau a Tour. And these are, what is this shop called? Um, gosh, I haven't purchased from them in so long, but I can't remember. I am gonna pull this wood pen. What is this shop? That's really gonna bother me. That means it's been a really long time since I've used a pen from this shop, so. That's kind of intriguing. What is the shop's name? I cannot, I can't think of it at all. And that's really gonna bother me. Um, wow, it's been a long time since I've used a pen from them. So let me, I'm scrolling through my feed. This is why I post my, okay. It is from Mad Wood Turning, that's it. I could not think of that for some reason. I have not purchased from them in so long and clearly I haven't used a pen from them in a long time. So I am gonna pull this one as, I mean, it just kind of makes sense. Like you have all the wood beams. So that is a contender for obvious reasons. I love using wood pens or hybrid pens um, when, I'm working on landscapes so not surprised that I picked that one okay this is O'Brien custom turnings I have a lot of pens from them I could do a a floral Ooh, that could be pretty let's pull that one we'll narrow down I also have it in green which if I chose to do ooh. Hmm. Kind of vibing with the green. So I'm gonna take the green and pull, put this one back. What else is in here? Butterfly effect wears, it looks like. Um, I don't think I wanna use, I think I just used a pen from them on a recent kit. So I think I'm gonna hold on that. Well, let's look in this piece and then we'll narrow down. All right, so these are Peachy Keen. I don't think I've used this hybrid yet, but the colors aren't really there for me. Um, I can't wait to use this seashell pen in the summer. These are Miscreation by Danny. Nothing that I wanna use from them. These are Norse Alchemist. This one could be really pretty, but I don't... I guess if I went for this tape, I could use this pen. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pull that. This is what I do. Oh, we don't talk about that pen turner at all. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a story time for for someday. Um, all right, so I think I'm probably gonna put this one away and I'm gonna choose between these and these I'm kind of leaning towards this set but I will definitely be finding um an opportunity to use this pen I have not used it yet I picked it up at the end of last year I think I just feel like this is kind of the vibe that I'm going for is that what I want <sighs> let me grab my trees and we will <laughs> we'll go from there all right I have some trays. So these are my trays from Cat Proof. Um, obviously, I have a green one. 
I just used, I've been using cat proof a lot lately. So I feel like maybe I shouldn't. These aren't all of my trees, which I know sounds crazy. Um, I do have a bunch of trees from Bella Ardena Cole, which is their version two, I think. And then I have some trees from JH in Vision Labs as well. These are Muni made, and this is a tray from Tori's Diamond Tools. But this combo is kind of speaking to me. Ooh, that might be the one to beat. I have not used a Muni made tray in a long time, so I might enjoy that quite a bit. I do have some trays from Mixes Notions. I don't tend to use them um, very often. And I have some trays from, um, what's this company? She has a YouTube channel? For, uh, add more zest. She used to be four kids at 147. I don't use these often enough. Um, I find them a little bit shallow, um, but I need to make a point to use to use those more. And then these are from Mountain Inspirations. They're really pretty, but they don't fit the vibes for this kit. And then I have trays from Crafty Creations by Ellie. I do have a green in her new funnel. Is that what this is? No, that's not a funnel. It? Yeah, it is a funnel. I do have a green in her funnel tray. Not funnel. What is wrong with me? In her gridded tray. But that's a little too, like, Christmas green for this kit. These are by Printable by Design, I think is what it's called. Um, I used this blue one. I need to find a kit to use this yellow one with. No, I used the yellow one, I think. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking that this is, I'm thinking this is the set. I, I think this is it. So let me get this stuff put away. We're going to pull out some putty and wax, and then we're going to look at my cover minder boards. So give me a second and I'll be right back. Okay, let's pick a wax alternative. Now, really quickly, normally when I start showing my collections or stashes, I do that like what I feel is really stupid, but it's really necessary because people are mean. Um, these are my items. Um, I'm not sharing them to be like, look at everything I have. Diamond painting is my main hobby. It is something that has helped me through so many difficult times just in the few years since I've started diamond painting. So I'm not trying to like shove it in your face that I have these things. I know I have a lot of diamond painting accessories and items. Um, obviously the number of things that I have has increased since I've started my channel because I like to share small shops with you guys. I know that I don't have to defend myself, but sometimes when you are sharing these items, it just feels like you have to, even when you know you don't. So I do have a lot of accessories. I have a lot of trays. I have a lot of pens. I have a lot of putty and wax. They are things that bring me joy along with the hobby that they go with. So please don't take it the wrong way that I'm trying to show off. I don't feel that way at all. Um, I know most of you guys that watch my channel are amazing and you always tell me like, why do you feel like you need to defend yourself? You don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to explain yourself. And I really appreciate that. But there are a few people occasionally that will come in onto my channel and they'll say something and I can pretend like it doesn't bother me. But at the end of the day, I spend my money on what I want and how I want. Uh, at this point in time, I do not have children. Um, my boyfriend and I own our house, you know, like we just don't, I, I can spend my money how I want, I guess is what I'm trying to say without sounding snarky. Um, I also try to make a point to share and feature a bunch of shops. I like to rotate through things. Like you guys may have heard me saying, um, I haven't used a pen from this shop in a while, or I haven't used this tray in a while. I like to cycle through and make sure I'm always sharing new things. Obviously I have favorites, but I do like to share love. I like to, you know, put a bunch of shops out there for you guys. So sorry for that rant, that tangent, but 
moving on. <laughs> so I do have some of my waxes and putties. Um, I don't have anything from Randa's Crafty Corner because I just used some of her, actually both her wax and putty I used on a recent finish. Um, and I don't have, I think that's it actually looking over here. I have like a few randoms that I just don't have a home for that just sit in a container of their own. Um, but I do have a bulk of my um, collection. So these are, excuse me, designs, which um, a lot of these are samples because I was signed up to her sample program for a while. Um, she doesn't do that anymore, I don't think. Also, she's changing her packaging, which is really bumming me out. I love the, like, this is a sample size one. I love these containers. I just, I'm so bummed that she's changing um, her packaging, but it is what it is. Um, I don't think, I have a putty in mind, and it's not one of these. So I have those. I also have some putties from Butterfly Effect Wears. Um... I just used her peach one recently, so I'm not going to use anything from there. These are NYX's Notions. You guys know I love NYX's Notions putty, but I just used one of these as well. So put that over there. Um, I'm thinking about using one of these wax gems from Pretty Placers. I haven't used one of these. Oh, it smells so good in a really long time. Um, so I'm thinking that I might use one of these oh, pine tree scents. Um, I have pine trees and summer pines. I think I might go for summer pines. It's not very strong, but I have used this one before. And it's just, it's been a while since I've used pretty placers. So I think I'm gonna go for, oh geez. I think I'm gonna go for that for my single placer. And um, I don't even know if they make these anymore. I have so many regular pretty placers, um, but my container that I put them in is full, so I don't have room for any more. So I haven't been following, I still follow their shop, but I haven't been like keeping up on what they have. Um, as far as putty, I do have this shop, which is Putty Ella Mud. I shared this on, in my, I think new to me shop, small shop haul that I did. I don't think there's any in here that I want to use. I did use this one with my Easter kit, so I have used them recently. So I'm thinking, maybe don't tip it over is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking I might skip that this go around. I have my eye on an Enablers Outpost chit. C-H-I-T. I feel like when I say that word, I really need to enunciate and like spell it for you guys because it sounds like I'm saying something naughty. Um, I have not used their putty in quite a while. So I was thinking, yeah, see they have a pine scent as well. Have I used this one? It kind of looks like I've used it. Oh, it smells so good. I feel like pine is kind of like a Christmassy scent, but this is the image that we're doing. So I feel like I can get away with pine. But now this one is called forest pine. This is how my brain works, you guys. This one is called, oh, but this one's pine trees. So I think I'll be fine with the other one, right? Forest pine and summer pine. I think we'll do that. So two products that I haven't used in a while. So that'll be nice. I keep these in one of these bags that they sent. I think actually this sample set that I have in the little gold bags, I think they came in this drawstring bag. So let's put those back in there. If I can get them in. Also, I know that Enablers Outpost is running a raffle, I think. So I'll like tag them in my posts and hopefully that'll help get their name out a little bit more. They're very popular in the diamond painting community. I'm not by any means saying that I'm the one that's going to get them <laughs> new followers, but um, if I tag them, sometimes people will obviously click over to their page. So we will do that. I did also grab one of my um, little bins that I use. I get these off of Amazon. 
I don't have any Amazon affiliate links, but I can see if I can find one of these sets. I think they're like marketed towards like baby nurseries. So you can store like little baby things, but I use them to keep all of my accessories and extra drills and everything all in place. All right, let's, let's see. Oh, I think all we need is a cover minder. We have a tray, we have our washi, we have our pen, we have our wax and putty. This is the washi that I used on my containers. I'll keep that in there. We have our picture. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is going to pull my camera off of the filming arm here and I'm just gonna hold it while we look at my cover minder. So give me one more second. Okay, so sorry for the mess. I wasn't planning on doing this, but here I am. <laughs> so these are my cover minder boards and now you see why I need to do some serious reorganizing. I have a bunch of minders that I don't use. Like a lot of these resin ones I don't use. Um, and the patty wax ones are just massive. They take up a lot of real estate on these boards and I do not want to get another one. Um, I need to just condense and make sure I'm just sticking to these two. Um, actually, I have these putties too, which I haven't, these are from Crafts with Crashly. Um, I'll need to make a point to use these in some kits with one of my kits coming up here. I think I have some summer scents, so. I will have to make a point to do that. I do have a video where I show you my cover minder collection. I'll try to remember to link that down below. I don't know. I've given myself a lot of videos to link, so I don't know if I'll remember, but um, I do have a video, so we'll see if I remember. Um, so I keep these organized by, now that they're so full, they, the organization has kind of trailed off a little bit like this guy I just needed to find a spot so that's where it went but I have a Christmas minder that I need to repair that actually goes there so but they are more or less organized so we have like Disney and character uh pop culture and then I have like cats on this one and then over here I have Christmas fall Halloween and then these are like my general minders so like floral ones we have animals um, we have book themed ones. We have like ocean and beach themes. And then we have like diamond art club cover minders, which that is one of the sections that I am thinking about just eliminating from my boards because I often just don't gravitate towards those ones when I'm choosing accessories. Um, so I'm sure I could come up with a different solution to, just to, to house those, um, just so they're not taking up space here. But we are going to be focusing primarily on like this section here. So we have some florals, we have some animals, um, and just kind of like not necessarily super themed ones. Um, they're just more like neutral. And I actually forgot I had the minder that I'm looking at right now. And I'm thinking that it might be this one. I think this might be... I think this might be the perfect minder. I think, actually that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I was not sure what I was gonna choose, but um, the kit that I'm working on, I chose because it reminds me of where my boyfriend's parents have their camp. We, send a, we spend a lot of time there in the summer, so we make a lot of memories. So I think that this one might be perfect and don't mind my setup there, but I think it'll just go quite well with what we've got going on here. It's a neutral in color. Sorry for the awful camera work, but I think that that, I think I like it. It has the mountains. Obviously this has mountains. Yeah, I think that's it. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Cool. So we have all of our accessories. Um, we have our putty, our tray, our pen, washi tape, cover minder, and we have our wax. So I think that that's everything I need. Um, I'm going to end this for tonight, but I will see you guys, same video for you, but in the morning for me. Um, we are going to talk about how I section off my large kits, really just any kits that I work on, but we're going to do washi tape and we're going to set up my desk for working on a large project. So I will see you guys then. 
Okay, I am back. It is the following morning. Um, I do still have my pajamas on, so <laughs> I'm gonna try to stay out of frame while I um, section this kit off with washi tape. So we're gonna start with the washi and I go all the way around the outside of the kit as well as we're going to um, section off our first row that we'll be working on. Um, and then once I finish this, I'm going to show you guys how I set up these large kits on my drafting table. So first thing, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get everything in frame. I'll do my best. I am going to have to get down on the floor, so I'm not going to be able to see what the camera is capturing. So hopefully I have it lined up okay. Um, but we're going to start with the outline of the canvas, and then I'll probably bring you guys down a little bit closer while I section off the kit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with the bottom here. So I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see exactly what I'm doing, but we'll do, we'll do the best we can. So I like to pull the plastic up. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, let me open my washi. So I'm just going to line this up as close to the drill field as possible without getting any tape actually on it. And one thing that I like to mention when talking about doing washi tape around the outside of a canvas is I try to recommend that you don't like pull the tape tight because you can actually like buckle the canvas and you'll have these weird like indents so I try to just lay it down as flat as I can let's spin this around again sorry if this isn't perfectly in frame I can't actually see you guys are seeing. Okay, so that is the top and bottom. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and do the sides. This kit is so big. <laughs> Thank you. 
have our canvas washi taped around the edge. So I'm gonna pull you guys down a little bit so I can show you um, my process for deciding the size of my sections. So. Hopefully that is straight. <laughs> I like to stop, or I like to start in the bottom right hand side of my canvas just because I am right handed and I hate putting my hand on the plastic. So if I start on the right, then I'm always putting my hand on already completed sections, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna do. So when I measure out my sections, I always start measuring it down in the bottom right hand corner. So what I'm going to measure right now is the height of the section that I'm going to be working on. Generally, I choose like a section anywhere from probably like 13 to 18 centimeters tall. However, I can get it closest to like um, a whole number, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So this is a hundred centimeters long or tall. So I think I'm probably gonna go for like six rows maybe. So let me just measure this and make sure that we're close to 100. Now, when you're sectioning with washi tape, you do not need to measure. You could just eyeball it. Personally, I like to measure because I like my sections to be about the same size. Generally, when I'm measuring and deciding on the section size that I want, in my mind, it's how big of a section can I get done in a night. So normally when I start a section, I want to know that I'll be able to finish that in that sitting of diamond painting. So this is, I know you guys can't see the top, but that's okay. I am measuring in centimeters. Okay, so this is 99 and a half. So I'm very bad at math, so forgive me. <laughs> Alexa, what's 99.5 divided by six? 99.5 divided by six is approximately 16.5 Okay, so 16.5. That is a really good size for me. Also, sorry if I just set off anybody else's Alexa. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so 16.5 is going to take us to the top of this U. you guys see that kind of all right so then I'm going to measure the size of my sections so this is 69.5 Alexa what's 69.5 divided by 4 69.5 divided by 4 is 17.375 Okay, 17.375. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. So I think I'll just go I'm gonna go 17 and a half on the outer sections. So 17.5 will take us to there. So I'm also, I'm also going to measure 17.5 on this side. 
which will take us So these two outer sections will be the same. You can't see this other one. These two right here will be the same. So I'm going to measure here, which will be this part to this part. So 34 and a half. Alexa. What's 34 and a half divided by 2? 34.5 divided by 2 is 17.25. Okay, so super close. So that's going to take us to here. Is that right? Yep. So a little bit off, but I'm okay with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. I say that as I'm sitting here measuring <laughs> where I want it to go. All right, so this will be our first row right here. So I will start here in the right and then I'll work my way over. And as I complete a section, so when I complete this section, I'll take this piece of washi tape off and I'll move it up. And I'll do that through each section. And then when I finish the row, I'll move the row up. That is just what works for me. Um, and I should also mention that when I'm working on this section, so I'll cut along this washi tape here. And then this piece will move up here. And then you'll complete the, the section that's behind the washi and then the rest of this section. When I first started seeing people using the washi tape method, I never understood how they didn't just have a strip of, of canvas that didn't have diamonds. I just couldn't figure it out in my head, but that is how it works, at least for me. So now that we are sectioned with washi, I'm going to um, change the camera angle. I don't know where I'm going to put my camera. I need to figure that out. And I'm going to show you how I set up my drafting table for a large canvas. So I will be right back. Okay, so this is a little bit of an experimental <laughs> camera angle, but we're gonna see how this goes. So this is my drafting table. It's a bit of a mess. So for that, I apologize, but um, it is what it is at this point. So, oh my gosh, I'm watching. We have a family across the street who have two little girls and she has like her own little motorized John Deere. She's so cute. She's helping her dad do yard work. Oh my gosh, so cute. Anyway, so this is my setup for when I'm diamond painting on my drafting table. Um, it's a little messy, but that's okay. <laughs> so I have this drafting table off of Amazon. I've had this for at least two years now because I got it right when we moved into the, our house. So it's tried and true. I love it. It works really well for me. However, I do not diamond paint on an angle. It just doesn't work for me. I had hoped to be able to do that, but it just, it doesn't work. So it works. It just doesn't work for me, I should say. So in hindsight, I could have probably just gone for a desk rather than a drafting table, but I do like the extra storage. And then I have like frequently used items like tweezers and cutting tools and stuff on this side and then there is a little extension over here so I do I do like it I do recommend um I don't know that this one is still available but I'll see if I can find it and add it to my description box down below anyway this drafting table will fit pretty much any size kit that I'm working on. I've never worked on one that's like wider than the tabletop and I don't think that this one is going to be either. I think this one's going to fit just fine 
but what I do need to do is clear off the little things that I keep on top of the painting so I can get the painting laid down. So I have a little coaster. I have one of these trinket trays. I'm actually going to switch out for a different one, so we'll do that in a second. And then I have this little lamp over here. I love this lamp. I got it from... Too many cords. I got this from Target and it's actually battery operated, um, but you can also plug it in by a USB and you can actually change the brightness and the temperature which I actually find really useful because sometimes depending on the time of day, you don't need obviously an, as bright of a light and have, being able to change it from like the like LED color to like a traditional light bulb um, can really help with glare. So I struggle a lot with glare on my diamond paintings. I am right in front of a window, but also I wear glasses. So sometimes having too much light um, doesn't work out. So having something like this where I can change how bright it is, is very helpful. So I'm just going to put that over there. I got that from Target. I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, and I like having the battery operated in case the power goes out because then I can still diamond paint <laughs> and our power goes out a lot here. I also have, um, just a regular lamp on like, um, a bar. Uh, so sometimes I'll have both of those on so I can get light from both directions and then I don't think you guys can see this but right here is a an arm where I can either film or watch stuff off of. Um, I also have a computer over there so that I can watch other things which is where these speakers come into play but whatever. That doesn't matter. <laughs> All right I'm actually going to take these down. because we need to get our canvas set up. Now, you may notice that on the back of my drafting table here, I have a pool noodle. I just cut the pool noodle down to size and I cut a slit in the middle so I could fold it over the back of the table. That helps a lot with making sure the diamond painting doesn't get bent. Now, you're probably saying, well, why don't you have one on this one? Which I did. It just wasn't comfortable for me to diamond paint with because it gives you like an extra bump that you have to reach over as you're diamond painting. So sometimes you do get a little bit of a crease, but especially with Diamond Art Club, I don't worry about that because it generally just comes out of the canvas when you lay it flat. Also, when I'm working on a large diamond painting, as I finish a section, I'm able to roll it under here. So I will show you guys how that works. So I am going to So I just feed the kit down the back and this fits perfectly on this drafting table. And then as I finish a section, I pull down and then I kind of start to just feed it under this bar. So if you guys see these little drawers that I have here, right here, there is a little metal bar and I'm able to just start feeding the canvas through there as I finish it. I know some people like to roll their kit up, but again, that kind of leaves me with the same issue of having that extra bump that I need to reach over when I'm diamond painting. So when I just have it like this, I'm able to just start the next section. So that is that. Let me put this back. And then what I like to do is I just put my drills that and then I have my little bin that we 
talked about earlier in a video with all of my accessories. And that will go up there. And then I like to keep one of these trinket trays on my desk. I have some old wax in this one. And I like to keep um, my little drill container. So this container I fill with drills that are like I find on the canvas that I must have dropped out of the tray that I'm using or if I you know for whatever reason um, when I'm dumping them back in and I get an extra couple that fall out I'll just put them in here because I do separate my trash drills to share with you guys in my post reviews so I don't want to just have trash drills and extra drills to share with you I tried my best to keep them separated so I'm actually going to use a different tray I've been using that white one for a bit so going to switch to this one which is from Lexi Sparkle um, they have an Etsy shop they also have a YouTube channel um, and I have not used this one yet and it's really beautiful so I'm gonna use this one so I like to keep that on my desk Again, I'll keep that little container of drills there. And then as I'm working, um, generally my pair of tweezers will end up on that little tray. My pot of wax will end up over there. Just stuff that's, you know, readily available for me if I need to grab it quickly. And then I also have a little coaster. This is from Shiny Shaza that I tend to keep in the back for my whatever drink that I have that evening. So that is my setup for a large diamond painting. I do all of my diamond paintings for the most part over here, unless we're not home. So this space is very versatile for smaller kits as well as larger kits. Um, I definitely feel like I have enough room. And yeah, that is, that is today's video. It's definitely a long one. I was looking at all of my clips and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is going to stink to edit. So that is what we've got going on there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I have decided that Wednesday will be an unboxing and then on Friday we will have post review Friday with my crafties kit. So let me know if there is anything that you feel like I left out. If you have any questions, I'm happy to revisit this type of video and do something like this again. I will not be doing this for every kit that I work on because it does take a lot to film and get things edited and stuff. I forgot to put my little lamp on my table. I knew something was off. Let's move this to the middle. That looks better. I knew something was missing. <laughs> anyway, um, I will let you guys go since this is a long video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in, I will see you guys on Wednesday.